If you like my art, you can buy it as prints, keychains, bookmarks, stickers, washi tape, notepads. You find it all in my shop. Link is in the description box below. Hi everyone, we got another scrawler box, so let's open it. And if you would like to check out scrawler box yourself, I will have a link in the description box below, along with a discount code for you guys to use. So let's check it out. I think I know what this is. Box number 91. Has it really been 91 boxes? That is incredible. Oh, oh my, this is gorgeous. Look at this. This is made by Katrina Young from Australia. And this is where you can find them and their art. Oh, we got a square paper pad. I love drawing in a square format. This is a Bristol board from Art Gecko. Look at that smooth, thick paper. Just as I thought, we got Copic markers. Copic Chow to be precise with a chisel nib and a brush tip. This color scheme is just perfect. We got purple and this teal greenish color and also kind of a beige color that goes very well with a purple and green. And the colors are spectrum green, brick beige and mellow. Or if you want to be a Copic nerd, GO2, V15 and E31. I never really learn the, the color codes. It's much easier for me to remember the actual name of the color. So, ooh, refreshers. I haven't seen that in a while. Sour apple flavored. We got a graphite pencil from Derwent. Oh, it is actually 2H. If I ever use graphite pencils, that is the one that I prefer using. The H is that it is a little harder, which makes it easier to erase. So that is what I like sketching with when using graphite pencils, as you can see. And we also got a pigment liner from Stedler, size 2H pencil, Copic markers, fine liner, square paper. Again, it kind of feels like this box was made for me. I mean, it is made for the featured artist, but yeah. And we have the challenge, of course, and some, some cat here. Feminine energy. Oh, I like that. But first, let's swatch these just to get a, a look at the colors. And I don't think I want to waste any of the precious square paper but here we have a little bit of bristol board e31 a very light kind of sand color geo2 i've been calling it teal but it is actually just green very pretty and then we have the the mellow v15 actually very pretty purple leaning a little towards pink the graphite pencil and the pigment liner. Really like that we get this lighter color along with the, the more mid-tone kind of color. I mean, the green is a little lighter, but the purple I would call a mid-tone because then you can do some highlights and also shading. So also when layering the different colors, you can get some new tones as well. Oh, that is a nice color that the green and purple makes. Almost like a muted violet. And you can also layer the same color to get a darker tone as well. So yeah, there are so many different ways that you can use alcohol-based markers. Yeah, it will be fun to be working with Copics again. I haven't done that in, in a while. So yeah, let's make something. So I'm sketching up my warm-up piece and for this one I'm not really following the prompt. To be honest, I got an image in my head and I just wanted to draw it and who am I to refuse an idea when inspiration strikes? So we have a kitty, of course, walking on a stone path in a garden and I wanted this sort of cozy, overgrown look with a lot of flowers and leaves in the foreground. 
Once watching the colors earlier, I learned that the green and purple make this very pretty muted violet color, so I layered the purple on top of the green in the corners of the drawing to create like shading. I was hoping this would add more depth and it also works sort of like a frame around the cat. It is really fun to work with a limited color palette and just play around with layering and mixing the different colors to get new colors and new tones and I realized that this is basically a free color challenge. Remember when those were really big here on YouTube? It is a fun challenge though to be creative and figure out how to work with the colors and materials that you've got. Something that I noticed though when layering the markers, especially in the outer corners where I layered the green and purple multiple times, after a few layers it seems like the paper couldn't absorb the ink properly anymore, it kind of just layered on top of the paper and created these shiny sticky spots. This is Bristol board which is what I always use for my marker drawings but this paper is new to me, I haven't tried it before. And and this have never happened to me, maybe there is some different coding on this paper that there isn't on the paper I normally use, I don't know. But other than that, I had a lot of fun working on this piece, I just tried to not layer the markers too much. My initial idea was to make the cat in this dark violet color by mixing the green and purple, but this piece already felt very busy, so I felt like it needed some more lighter area, so I decided to keep the cat white with a few beige spots instead. I also thought I would outline everything with a fine liner, but I noticed by doing some tests that the fine liner ink took a very long time to dry on top of the markers for some reason, and I didn't want to risk smudging anything when doing the outlines. I do like the lineless style though, it feels very soft and nice, so I compromised and only outlined the cat to make it stand out a little more. And yeah, here it is, it is done for now. Alright, so for this next one I had something completely different in mind. First, I am actually drawing a person, that hasn't happened in a while. I don't want to spoil too much, but this actually turned out to be one of my favorite pieces that I have done in a while. I am so glad that I took my time with this. Second, for this one I will be using more than the art supplies included in the box, but it will still be based on the color scheme, green, purple and beige, that is actually what inspired this whole piece along with the prompt of course. As you have probably seen in some of my previous videos, I've been playing around and experimenting with alcohol inks by dripping the ink straight from the refill bottles onto the paper, creating different patterns, and I wanted to try it here too by dripping ink all over the sketch, and I'm trying to focus the different colors on different parts of the sketch, like beige on the face and skin, green and blue for the background, and purple on the flower on the head. So once I had splashed out all the inks where I wanted them, I grabbed my markers and started refining the drawing, adding shading and details. I want to refine the face, but I don't want to draw over the pattern that I just created with the inks too much. I want to keep the randomness of it, if that makes any sense, but I think I ended up with a pretty good balance. So as I mentioned, this time the prompt did actually inspire the art along with it color scheme. My first idea was to draw a more androgynous person so that the feminine energy, which was the prompt, wouldn't be too focused around the person itself because feminine energy doesn't necessarily mean woman. I believe that all genders have both masculine and feminine energy traits. Basically masculine energy is more about doing, it is more action oriented, while female energy is more about being and creative intuition. Like polar opposites, yin and yang, you do need a little bit of both for a good balance. 
Anyway, as I was saying, I first made a person more androgynous, but they changed during the process and to me this is more of a woman now. She has a lotus flower on the top of her head to which there is actually a meaning. There is a whole symbolism to this whole drawing, but I won't actually say what. Instead, in the comments below if you want to, Please let me know what you feel when seeing this piece, what it means to you. I'm super curious to hear your thoughts. To me it has a lot of meaning, I mean I'm the one who created it, but it doesn't necessarily mean the same to you. And that is the great thing about art, it can be anything that you want. Again, I love how this piece is turning out, so pretty with all the colors. I had a little trouble with the lotus flower though, the purple ink that I used was a little too dark unfortunately. I could have added gouache on top of it, but I felt like I didn't want to add the gouache texture into the mix, so I decided to add color pencils instead. I lightened up the petals of the lotus with a white color pencil and I think it turned out a little better. So with the color pencils I sharpened some of the lines and I added some more contrast and textures and shading, just some more definition. I decided to actually not use the fine liner at all, even if it was my initial idea to use it less to add some line work, but I am very very happy that I decided against that because I think the color pencils kept that soft look that I really liked, but it still added some contrasts. But yeah, I had such a great time with this. This is the most fun that I've had with traditional art in a long time. It was really a while ago since I lost myself into a drawing like this and I just felt so happy and full of energy afterwards. And since I already had the color pencils out, I decided to go back to the kitty in the garden and outline the purple flowers just to give it a more finished look. But yeah, that is all for now. Thank you so much Scrawlerbox for the art supplies and inspiration and thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!